please. Thank you. I hope you can uh, see the screen and hear my voice, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank to all organizers of this uh, perfect webinar. And I would like to say hello to all participants from Ankara, Turkey. And my name is Türkmen Göksel and I'm a professor of, uh, of economics at the Department of Politics and Economics, uh, Ankara University. And today uh, I am going to talk about the economic issues of COVID-19. Okay, so this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, so first I will shortly talk about the scope of the presentation. Then uh, I briefly, I'm going to briefly talk about the COVID-19 situation. Uh, then uh, I will look at some macroeconomic indicators. And since we have limited time, uh, so of course I'm going to talk about some major uh, macroeconomic indicators. And finally, I'm going to present my own results uh, on calculations about real gross domestic product growth rate forecasts. Um, and as all we know, the coronavirus has spread rapidly to many countries, uh, of course, including Europe. And consequently, Europe faces a challenging year in 2020, like much of the global economy. And the European economy is projected to contract by around uh, 6 to 10 percent in 2020 uh, following uh, COVID-19. Uh, here, of course, all the projections are depending on many parameters, such as duration of pandemic, uh, the availability of vaccine, uh, or uh, duration of economic support pack, uh, packages, uh, and the degree of in, in improvement in trade and investment, and so on. So there's huge uncertainty for the future, so it's not easy to make projections. However, uh, so the numbers which I'm going to share with you hopefully will give some insight about how strong is the impact of uh, COVID-19 on uh, European and on world economy. But uh, we should keep in mind that uh, there's a huge uncertainty. Uh, uh, so we should be careful about uh, the projections. And this preliminary study focuses on the real GDP growth rate forecast in Europe in 2020, and also the, re the recovery period, hopefully the recovery period in 2021. Uh, I said preliminary because uh, I should update all the numbers which I calculated frequently because uh, the environment is changing quickly. So that's why I said this is a preliminary study because uh, it should be updated uh, frequently. And I also want to talk about COVID-19 situation. Uh, this is important because uh, this affects directly the duration of the contraction of the economy or and or the recovery of the economy. So as of yesterday morning, uh, we have uh, unfortunately over 36 million cases, coronavirus cases in, in worldwide. And unfortunately we have over 1 million deaths uh, and we have over uh, 27 million people who are recovered. And maybe the uh, one of the important uh, parameters is active cases, which is the total cases minus recovered cases minus deaths, is around 8 million. It is important because it means that actually we have uh, 8 million sick people right now, and actually almost 1% of uh, these uh, people are in serious or critical condition. So these numbers are important for economic forecasts also because, as I said before, it's going to the duration of the pandemic is going to the duration and the magnitude of the uh, pandemic is also going to affect the uh, contraction and the recovery of the economy as well. Okay, so this uh, picture is actually uh, showing the real GDP gross domestic product growth uh, worldwide and it is presented in annual percent, percent change. Uh, and I put this picture because I want to show the, uh, the big picture. Uh, this picture actually uh, capturing the four decades. Uh, it, it starts from uh, 1980s uh, up to today, 2020. And also this picture is including the 20, 2021 forecast as well. But the important point in this graph is that 
uh, when you look at four decades, it means 40 years, there is only, if uh, until today, there is only uh, one year, uh, 2009, uh, where the real GDP growth rate is negative. And it is almost close to zero. In 2009, we have a minus 0 0.1. So that's a contraction of the world economy in 2009, and it is almost close to zero. Uh, and as all we know, uh, that's because of the global crisis, uh, crisis in, uh, in the world in 2009. But if you look at 2000, 2020, you will see that uh, a burst uh, number, which is minus three, because the negative growth rate is uh, minus three uh, percent. And if you look at the 40 years, last 40 years, this is the worst number for real GDP growth uh, for worldwide. And as you see, the magnitude is much higher than the uh, 2009 case. Uh, in is higher in absolute terms. So uh, this, I think, this picture uh, is just showing how uh, important how how this uh, COVID nineteen is affecting the world economy. Hopefully, uh, as I said before, there are a lot of parameters and there's a lot of uncertainty uh, in the real life, of course. But hopefully, uh, we are expecting to grow. Uh, over 5% for next year uh, as, uh, worldwide. So the expected, uh, the growth, real GDP growth rate number is 5.8. So actually, uh, almost same pattern is true for Europe. So this picture is for Euro, only Europe. The previous picture was worldwide, but this picture is for just Europe, but you can see the same pattern. Uh, and once again, the, uh, the graph is starting from 1980s uh, up to today. Uh, and you can see only uh, two, uh, two periods which we have negative uh, growth rate in Europe. The uh, first one is in 1992 and in 1993, and it's around minus 2%. So that's the first negative growth uh, in last 40 years. And if you look at uh, 2009, once again, it's the, it's the effect of the global crisis, we see minus 4.8. But still for Europe, we understand that the magnitude, uh, the ex expected uh, number for Europe uh, is minus 6.7. Uh, so which shows that it is even uh, the, it's severe than the uh, last uh, global crisis. And hopefully, uh, in 2021, the economy uh, in Europe, uh, we expect to recover 4.4%. Uh, 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 so the same pattern is valid for uh, Europe as well as the uh, world. And actually, this uh, table is showing, once again, the real GDP growth rates for uh, focusing on 2019, uh, 2020, and 2021. The first important thing is that uh, we see blue parts in 2019 and 2021, which means that in all the regions or in all groups, such as Eastern Europe, Western Europe, uh, emerging and developing Europe, and so on, including advanced economies and world, in 2019, all of the groups have some positive numbers. And all these groups have negative numbers due to the, uh, the pandemic. And as we see in 2002, these are the expectations. Uh, worldwide expectation is minus three, but if you look at Europe, it is minus 6.7. Uh, and you can see some numbers for Eastern Europe and Western Europe, uh, but all of them are in red. So which means that there's a contraction uh, in 2020. And hopefully uh, we have blue uh, blue parts in 2021, which means that all these groups uh, and uh, regions are going to recover uh, in 2021. And as you see, uh, the numbers are mostly around uh, four point, uh, four, uh, four percent uh, for Europe, and also it is, is 4.5 percent for advanced economies. And in the worldwide, uh, we expect it a little bit more, 5.8. So. Hopefully, uh, this recovery is going to happen in 2021. Of course, real GDP growth is very important 
but there are some other important macroeconomic indicators as well. Maybe even more important uh, is the unemployment rate, of course. Uh, here, I just focus on 2019, 2020, and 2021. So as we expect, uh, there's an increase in un unemployment rate in both uh, euro area and in advanced economies. Uh, if you look at uh, euro area, you would see that all, there's a almost three percentage points increase. It was, the unemployment rate was 7.6 in 2019, but it is almost uh, three percent point more and it's 10.4 in 2020. Hopefully there will be a recover, recovery in 2021, but that number, the expected number in 2021 for euro area is 8.9. Actually, which is greater than the 2019 level. So actually, there is a recovery, but it is not uh, enough. So it is not; it is still a greater than the uh, previous year, 2019. Actually, same story is also true for advanced economies. Uh, it, it was 4.8 for 2019, and actually, there is a almost 3.5 uh, percentage point increase. Uh, in advanced economies in uh, unemployment rate. Hopefully there will be a recovery, uh, but still that recovery is not uh, enough because, because that number 7.2 for advanced economies for un unemployment rate is still higher uh, than the 4.8. So as real GDP growth rate, uh, as expected, unemployment rate is also adversely affected from COVID-19 process. Okay, so this is another uh, macroeconomic indicator, which I believe is important to sh uh, for showing uh, for this limited time. Uh, this is net lending or borrowing uh, as a percentage of GDP, as a percent of gross domestic product. So net lending is positive. Uh, if the number is positive, it means it's a net lending. And if the number is negative, it means it's a net borrowing. So it is calculated as revenue minus total expenditure. Uh, <clears throat> and actually, uh, we see that, we see that uh, actually both revenues are decreasing in most of the economies, of course, revenues are decreasing because of the cut, cutting the taxes and the expenditures, of course, are increasing. So that's why the net borrowing is increasing for most of the countries. <clears throat> uh, for example, if you look at uh, this picture is showing and the numbers uh, from since 1998 uh, until today. And al also there's a, a 2021 uh, forecast number as well. So we see that in 2009, this net borrowing number is minus six as a percent of GDP, of course. But in 2020, it is uh, even higher than the 2009 uh, global crisis. And as I said before, th there are two reasons for this. Uh, revenues are going down and ex uh, expenditures are going up. So uh, because uh, governments should increase their government expenditures uh, because they are uh, applying fiscal stimulus packages and also th they, they should uh, cut taxes as well. So that's, that's why the, in absolute terms, that's why the net borrowing is increasing. And once again, we see that this number is even uh, severe th than the uh, 2009 uh, global crisis. And actually we can compare this number with uh, advanced economies or emerging market and developing economies with Europe. And actually the same pattern is uh, true for all countries. Uh, when you look at uh, all different groups and regions, you will see that the numbers in 2019 is in absolute terms is uh, are in absolute terms are lower than the 2020 numbers because of the reasons which I just said, and hopefully uh, the, these numbers in absolute terms are going to decrease in 2021 if uh, if the uh, recovery is uh, occurring in 2021. Okay, since we are, since, uh, we are behind the schedule, uh, I, I just want to speed up. 
And these are the calculations, my calculations about some uh, selected European countries. And this table shows the real gross domestic product growth rates forecast for some uh, selected European countries. Uh, first of all, we can look at European Union uh, as a whole. Uh, for each year here in this table, I have two numbers. Uh, you can think as like the worst scenario and the best scenario. Uh, so in 2020, for example, the European Year Union uh, is expected to uh, contract 7.9. Uh, uh, in the worst case, uh, in the best scenario, it, it is still contracting, but now a little bit lower, uh, minus 6.8. So each country has some uh, unfortunately negative numbers here because all of them are affected from the COVID-19, from the pandemic. But if you look at the table, there are three countries which seems that they are affected more than the others, relatively more than the others. Uh, we see the Greece, uh, we see Italy, and we see the Spain. Uh, they are almost at a minus 10% level. So they are the uh, highest contraction forecast uh, for uh, European uh, countries. Uh, also, if you look at the 2021 part, uh, we see all, all, all the we see all the positive numbers, which means that uh, we are expecting all of them to recover in 2021. Of course, once uh, once again we have uh, some minimum and maximum numbers. You can think as this one is the worst scenario and the other one is the best scenario. Uh, for example, we expect European Union to uh, recover in 2021 by uh, between 4.3% uh, in between 6.6. So as we see, uh, look at the countries in this table, uh, it, if we look at the minimum column, we see that the numbers are around three and four. Uh, there are some five numbers, five, uh, but usually the numbers are uh, in between three and four. So which means that uh, we can say that uh, we expect a growth uh, recovery for real GDP in uh, Europe in between uh, three and four uh, percent in this scenario. Of course, uh, as I said before, these projections are, uh, we, have, we should uh, frequently update these projections because there's huge uncertainty about the uh, uh, duration of pandemic, magnitude of the pandemic, and so on. Uh, so we should be careful about these uh, values, of course. Okay, I want to uh, thank all of you. And if you, if you have any questions, of course, I'm going to take all these. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Gaxia. And now we have uh, around...